Welcome. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate some basic and simple keyframing animation inside of 3ds Max. So in order for us to get started, I'm just going to make a couple of primitives here for us to play with. So I'm using a plane to create uh, a ground and then a ball using sphere. So you can see here in the perspective view, we have the sphere and the plane. And in our other views, of course, we have them here. Now, you'll probably remember from the 3D graphics course uh, that we can use different views to kind of see the same thing. When it comes to animation, um, it can really be very beneficial to be using one view over another. In fact, there are many times where doing something in one view might be very um, advantageous over trying to do something, for example, in perspective view. In fact, I really recommend using perspective view uh, mostly as viewing the animation and making tweaks rather than doing the majority of your animating there uh, whenever possible. Now as you get into more complex things of course you know you might do more in here but uh, until you get the hang of everything again these other views are going to be much more uh, user friendly. Alright so I'm just going to select our ball. The first thing you'll note is if you remember from 3D modeling we have our gizmo on our ball. So each of our Cartesian coordinates is represented by the arrow, X, Y, and Z, and they're different colors. So you can see here red for X, green for Y, Z for blue. Now, this is set to my, um, the orientation right now, what we're looking at is this orientation of the ball. I made my ball in the front view, so my Z axis is pointing toward me, where Y is up, where if I had made it in the top view, for example, then Z would be up. So as we create objects, you can see again, I made my plane in my top view where Z is up. Notice the difference there. Okay. Also now if I'm viewing in this view, it may flip. So sometimes you might actually be seeing this in a local orientation versus a global orientation. And that's actually located up here. So you can actually change whether you want to view it uh, lo local. And you can see Z there. or world. Um, I would say probably for this class, the most likely you're going to be working with either local world and occasionally parent as far as the different orientations. Now this just basically you can think of it kind of as, I don't know, I got like a, yeah, I don't know, this uh, flow naze that I had sitting next to me. You can see that this tip, think of it as the top of the flow naze, right? So even if I rotate it 90 degrees, this way's up, that would be the world orientation, but this would be the top still, even though it's rotated. So if I did local, this way would be up, right? This way would be Z axis, um, where world or global is Z axis up and down. So 3ds Max works on a Z up axis. This is different to different applications. So if you're watching this video, but you decided you want to use like Maya or Blender, a lot of 3D software applications have a Y up world. That's why if you're moving from application to application, um, a lot of the times you'll need to flip or rotate your model. And if you're working in game design, uh, the same thing can be true in it. Some game engines are Y up and some are Z up. So for example, like Unreal is a Z up axis that was developed with 3ds Max originally in mind. Uh, so again, some other game engines might have Y up axis. Again, that comes from old 2D games where Y would be the top of your screen. So there is some uh, discussion there. I probably should have made that in a different video. Anyway, so I'm going to grab the ball here. You know, we've, we've used these tools in 3D modeling. So move, rotate, and scale. The one thing I want to note is you can animate along all of these. So move, rotate, and scale are both um, your Euler controllers inside of Max, and we can animate these things. Um, I would say, while wow, position and rotation are things we're gonna animate all the time, for most purposes, unless there's some specific intent, and you're only doing it inside of Max, uh, we don't an you don't probably wanna animate the scale. Be careful there. All right, so with this turned on, it's very easy to start animating. You'll notice at the bottom of the screen, there is your timeline, 0 to 100. 
You can edit this timeline at any time by clicking this little time configuration dialog. It looks like a clock with a gear. And you can change information like your start time and your end time. You can also play around with frame rate and different elements as well in there. All right, like most things in Max, there's probably more information and settings than you really need to edit um, unless you have a specific purpose to do so. So to start animating, the easiest way really is just to turn on Auto Key. Auto Key is probably one of the most amazing and occasionally frustrating features inside of 3ds Max. By turning on Auto Key, everything you do starts um, listening for changes and will automatically animate. Uh, I will say there's a heads up. There are so many things that you can animate inside of 3ds Max that while this is on, you can accidentally animate stuff you didn't intend to. So please be careful while using the Auto Key. That being said, it also is super awesome of a tool and very, very easy to use. If I move my object, so I'm going to move my timeline from 0 to, say, 30. And I'm just going to move this ball up. Nothing too complex. You can see it has now created keys and an animation. It's that easy. Turn on Auto Key and move it. You're animating. Notice the key is red. That red key is telling me that I have a position animated. Okay. Now, it might be kind of hard to see with a sphere, but let's go ahead and go to our rotation tool. And again, on frame 15, I'm going to rotate it. Now, if I want to, I can turn on snapping at the top. So I'll turn on angle snap and percentage snap. So that way I can easily rotate this exactly 90 degrees, which is what I want. Notice here, I just got to kind of watch and it'll automatically snap. It's a little easier here to see maybe in the front view, but if I go back to zero and play, you can see the ball rotating and moving. It rotates to frame 15, it moves to frame 30. Notice now a green key has appeared on the timeline. That is symbolizing a rotation. So when something moves, it's red. When something rotates, it's green. I uh, imagine some people watching this video are ready to guess what scale is going to do if we do animate scale, right? I'll grab the scale tool. Now, again, I said we probably don't want to do this most of the time, but we're learning. This is the time to experiment and play. I'm going to scale it up. Again, I'm on frame 45 now, so you can see in the timeline the different keys. So there is a green frame on 15. That's my rotation. A red frame on 30. That's my movement. And a blue frame on 45, which is my scale. Okay, and you can see here the ball does all of those things, right? Now, the last thing I want to note is if you look down on frame zero, this is important. Notice that keyframe is striped. So that is denoting that on frame zero, there is a rotation key, a scale key, and a position key. All three on frame zero, okay? If you do all three of those objects on one frame, or if you do two things on one frame, you will see the keys kind of stacked up. Now, using the timeline at the bottom is probably going to be the handiest, fastest, and most convenient way to animate. But as we can animate rotation, position, and scale all separately, although again, I don't recommend using scale unless there's a specific intent um, inside of Max, uh, you can see that some it's a bit limited. We do have our graph editor views that we can use to see these keys in an easier and more uh, flushed out way. So if I go to my graph editor, I can do, for example, the dope sheet, which will allow me to see all the keys. Let me go ahead and put the little plus sign here and open up my transform. And you can see now under frame zero, all three of those keys. So in here, I'm just kind of previewing it today. I don't, you know, again, don't want you to get overwhelmed just yet. Uh, but the dope sheet is a great way of viewing all of your animation keys. And you can do some really cool stuff in here, like um, change the timing easier or easily move and manipulate one or more of those keys. And if they're stacked up like frame zero, this can be a very easy way to do that. Again, there's no real easy way to move just one of the keys off zero at the bottom, right? I can delete them or, or erase them by doing something like right clicking, but if I want to just move that key, again, it's, it's tricky. So the dope sheet is the expanded view of that. 
Now, it's not the only view we have, just kind of as a preview. You can also view this animation in another way through the curve editor. One thing that Max does, which is really cool, but it's sometimes not what you want. <laughs> uh, again, every time the computer makes decisions for you, sometimes it's hit and miss, right? But by default, Max automatically eases in and out animations. So you can see the curve of the animations we've created. This is the curve, you know, again, going to frame 15. This is the curve going to frame 30 and the curve going to frame 45. And each of these, if I can click them, you can kind of isolate them a little bit. So if I look at it like the position, sorry, I couldn't cut off a little bit. So we can kind of look at the position, the rotation, or the scale by itself. Looks like the rotation is a little hard to see on here. But, or you can click on sphere and view all three at a time. Hello. Come on, man. Come back. All right, it looks like it's fighting me a little bit, but that's all right. Okay, so again, in the Curve Editor, we can kind of refine this animation a little more. I can tell you, I've used the Curve Editor primarily for doing things like if I want to remove the in and out ease. Um, for doing most animations, it adds kind of a nice, smooth transition between the keys, so you have a, a nice, smooth playback. However, there are times where, let's say, you wanted to animate a propeller on a plane, which is a very common example for this, um, and you wanted that propeller to continually move at the same rate. You wouldn't want it to ease in and ease out of the animation. If you remember from this week, I asked you to watch the 12 principles of animation, and ease in and ease out is one of those principles. So again, Max has that built in to help with your animations. Again, you can always go to the Curve Editor to modify it at a more advanced level. So, again, these are all tools that you can use if you want. They're all at your disposal. So, again, this is how you create a basic keyframe animation inside of Max. And, again, I can go to frame 60, for example. Let's say I want to come up here and move the ball to here. You can see it goes up and then over. All right. Again, very easy. You can go back and kind of add the animations. So for this assignment, I want you to play in here. I want you to experiment. I want you to try and play with the keys um, and basically get used to this interface and how it works. And um, you know, as we go on, we're going to be working with controllers and constraints next, which basically means replacing this default controller, which is the thing that controls the object, with something else, which can make for some really fun and cool animation um, helpers.